Hi all. So this time I'm here only for class 12 students, CBSC, for the subject information practices. As the board exams are approaching, this is just a sample video which shows you how you should solve your paper. As we know that the theory paper you get is for 70 marks. And out of this, you have majorly the whole syllabus is divided into seven questions. The first question is out of your first two chapters. That is computer networks and open source software. Now, for these, it's just theory, theory which you have to learn and you have to answer these questions. The best way is to go to the important topics, just read through those and you just can score very well in these 10 marks. For example, we'll be discussing this paper. It is like, with, why is a switch called an intelligent hub? So hub is basically a device which has one point for the server and it has other sockets so that you can connect other computers to it. Now switch is also kind of similar device but it is intelligent because it can choose like which should be the best outgoing line for an incoming request of data. Whereas a hub only passes on the message to the server and server decides where the data has to go further. But switch can decide the same thing of its own. So that's why we call switch as an intelligent hub. Then is what was the objective behind developing Unicode? So Unicode stands for universal code, which supports uh, basically alphabets of almost all the languages. So the basic objective was for the web, so that on web, when we get websites, the websites are not only in English. We can show the contents in any of the languages we want. Like you have seen in Google, you have options to show your result in Hindi, Tamil, or even you can choose Chinese, French, or something like that. So Unicode is to support multiple languages over the web. Expand the following forms. OSS is for open source software and ODF is open document format. You just have to write the definition since it's a one marker question. Just expand. That's it. You don't have to write the complete detail and all about it. Then is what is the use of repeater in a network? Again, a one mark question. So repeater is a device which is used to amplify the signals. So it boosts the signals and sends them further. Okay, then this is a two mark question, one mark each. It says identify the following device, a device that is used to connect different types of networks. It performs the necessary translation so that the connected network can communicate properly. So when you have to connect two different type of networks, one device can be a bridge for connecting LANs or MANs and another would be a gateway if you are connecting two wide area networks together. A device that converts data from digital bit stream into an analog signal and vice versa. This is modem, modulator, demodulator. Write one advantage and one disadvantage of using optical fiber. This is the most easiest question you can ever get. So advantage of optical fiber is that it is the fastest way of transmission media. There is no data tapping and there is no data loss. Disadvantage is it's expensive and you need skilled labor to work on it. Distinguish between open source software and proprietary software. So open source softwares are the ones which are available for free along with the source code and proprietary are the ones which you need to buy. Example of open source software can be your Mozilla Firefox, Linux, and proprietary are many of them like Photoshop, Microsoft Office, Tally, etc., which for which you need to get the license first and then you can use. So these are theory questions and for this obviously you need to learn theory, nothing else can help you. The question two is from Java and HTML. So roughly HTML is for five marks in this and five, six marks Java. So it's total 10 mark question again. So is a string containing a single character same as a char? No, a char occupies two bytes. That's it. It does not have that null character which is stored at the end of string. So if you have something in double quotes, it's taken as a string. That means the character plus that null character along with it. Whereas char is just one character of two bytes. Write a statement in Java to declare a string type variable with the name city. That means you have to write a statement in Java where the variable name is city. So how would we write that? So we just need to write string and name of the variable is city semicolon. That's it. This is how we write it. Distinguish between slash and percentage operator. 
So this is division and this is modulus, that's remainder operator. Slash sign gives you the quotient after the, the integer division. It can be used with floats as well. Percentage sign is called modulus operator, which is used to give the remainder after the integer division and you cannot use it with floats and double values. Okay, now it's about HTML. Insert a picture in the web page. We use IMG tag. Insert an empty line. For that, we have BR tag. So IMG, BR, both are empty tags. You don't have to close them. To put an image, we write IMG. Source is equal to name of the file. That's it. And for giving a blank line, we just write BR. HTML is case insensitive. So you can write anyhow you want. So what will be the value of variables AGG and AGG1 after the execution? So as you can see from the question, the first one is a while loop, the other one is do while. So while is your entry controlled loop, whereas do while is your exit control loop. In while, first of all, A is 9. Okay, 9 greater than 10 is false. So 9 is not greater than 10. The condition is false. The loop will not work at all. Thus, the value of AGG will be 9 only. It will not change. In the second example, B is 9, AGG1 is 0. The loop starts without checking any condition. Since it's do while, it goes inside the loop. AGG1 plus equal to B. So it was 0 initially. 0 plus 9 becomes 9, which goes to AGG1. So that becomes 9. Minus equal to 2 means we have to subtract 2 from B. That is, it will become 7. And then it will check the condition while 7 greater than 10, which is false. So it would stop and will not work again. So value of AGG1 at this time is 9. So thus for this loop also the answer is 9. So you just have to show the working and you have to write the final result. Then as question Y for 2 marks, this is what will be displayed in text area 1 after the execution of the following loop. The loop as you can see starts from 5. The condition is it's greater than or equal to 2 and every time i is decreasing by 1. There is a single statement, so that's why they have not put curly brackets over here. Means this line has to be repeated for the number of time i is true. What we are doing in this is j text area one dot get text plus a space plus integer dot two string i into i. So here initially i is five. Five greater than or equal to two is true. So it adds five into five, that is twenty five in the text area. So we get 25 in the text area. Then it comes to the decrement part. I becomes 4. 4 greater than or equal to 2 is true. This time it will add 16. So the text area becomes 25 space 16. Then I becomes 3. 3 is also greater than 2. So it will add 9 after that. Then I becomes 2. Condition is still true. It will add 4 after that. I becomes 1. The condition is false. It will stop. Thus the final output is 25. 16, 9, and 4. That is 5 into 5, 4 into 4, 3 into 3, and 2 into 2. At 1, the condition becomes false. Thus, the loop stops. So this is the output on the same line because we have concatenated space. If they would have written backslash n at this place, then all 4 will come on the next line. Okay, the next question is, give two attributes of table element of HTML. So with table tag, you can give the BG color, you can give width of the table, height of the table. So these can be the major attributes, align, which you can use with the table tag. So that's your question number two, quite easy. Then question number three is from SQL section, which we are not going to discuss right now. That will be discussing later. Right now, we'll finish the Java part first. So for finishing the Java part, let's go to question number four. That's a 15 mark question based totally on Java, where the first question is usually a theory question which asks like define object oriented programming. So you know the definition very well, you just need to learn it, but still repeating for you that object oriented programming is a way of programming where we treat everything as an object, where an object is something which has certain features and operations to be performed in that. Any object oriented programming has three major features. That is encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. Okay. The second question is kind of your favorite question. That is rewrite the following Java code using a switch case statement. And this is the most uh, easiest thing to do in your practical part. 
So what we have to do is the code is already written with if you need to write it with switch as we've discussed that whenever you have a variable over here with if that will be same variable is used in all different conditions. So this variable we're going to write with the switch statement and the values with which we are comparing will form the cases. Like in this example, the first line will remain the same. Int option is equal to integer dot percent. You'll write it as it is. Then instead of if, I'll be writing switch and in brackets option. So somewhat like this. We need to write switch and in bracket option. Start the curly bracket and then write case one colon. Now when I write case one colon here, I have to write whatever was written here in if option is equal to one, that is jtext field two dot set text regular. Put a semicolon. The same line will come here. I'm not writing that line. Then for second else if you'll write case two and write this line which is written over here. Then again case three, and then the same line will be given here. Case four, and the line that is on contract. And then finally, for the else part, you'll be writing default and you'll write invalid. And after that, we'll close the curly bracket. So don't forget to open and close the curly brackets. You'll get half mark deducted for this. So be careful while converting the code from if to switch. Okay. Then C part is what will be the value of x1 after the execution of the following code? It's very simple again. String x1 is spread and string x2 is piece. We write x2 dot concat x1. That means x1 should be concatenated. That is joined after the value of x2 and should be stored in x1. So this will become piece spread in the same cases. So piece will be all capital. Without any space, you'll be writing spread after that. So the answer for this will be piece spread. Then let's write Java statement to make jtext field one disabled. So to disable it, we have set enabled command. So you need to write j text field one dot set enabled. And since we have to disable it, we'll write false in bracket. If you would have to make it uneditable, then instead of enabled, we'll write editable. But this was to disable. So it's set enabled false. Then what will be displayed in text area one after the execution of the following code? Here G is initially one, it's do while exit control loop. So control goes inside the loop without checking any condition and it's showing G plus plus. Now it's a post increment, that means the value of G will be shown first and later on it will be increased by one. So it will show one, but G will become two. Then it comes to this line, here it's two plus one means G will become three. Then it checks the condition, three less than equal to five, it is true goes up again over here. Now it will set 3 but g becomes 4. With this line it becomes 5. Condition is still true. It goes up again. It sets 5 and g becomes 6. Then g becomes 7. 7 less than equal to 5 is false. It will stop. So the last value of g which was displayed was set 5. So the displayed value is 5 and since it is set text it's not append. So only the last value which was set will be displayed. So answer of this question will be 5. But you have to show it with the proper working. And then again, there is a question for strings. So string name is equal to Chennai Express and then TM is equal to name dot length. So we'll count the number of letters in this. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then space is also counted. It's 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. So total there are 15 letters. So TM becomes 15 and TN is 80 minus 15. That would be 65. So when we show the value for TM, it will show 8, 15 and for TN, it will show 65. So the first answer is 15 and the second answer is 65. Quite easy one. Then we have this, this question you've done number of times earlier. You have to count the water park and the amusement park charges. So it's given that when a group arrives at the recreation park, the number of people in the group and whether the group wants to enjoy the water park or not is entered. Entry fee is 500 per person. 
the person can choose to pay at water park by selecting the check box rise of water park will cost 250 extra per person so we have number of people entry fee is 500 per person that's fixed now what you have to do in this is first is on the click of command button calculate text field for entry fee should display entry fee per person into number of people if water park checkbox is selected text field for water park charges should display water park charges per person and then you have to show the total amount fine so we need to read the number of people over here so we take a variable for number of people we take for the entry fee we take for the water park charges and we take a total okay number of people we need to read so we'll read it from the first text field and for that we'll write integer dot percent j text field one or d1 whatever you want to write get text so it will come in number of person p is 500 multiplied by number of people and water park charges are calculated on the basis of your checkbox so if ch1 dot is selected that is if the checkbox is selected then we have to calculate water park charges as 250 into number of people so 250 into number of people else it should be zero and finally the total amount will be fee plus the water park charges which you're going to show it in the respective boxes so j text field 2 dot set text we have to show the fee and similarly the other two that is we have to show the water park charges and we have to show the total in text field 3 and 4 respectively so that's how we answer this quite easy you get three scores for this write java code to clear all the text boxes for that we just need to write j text field one dot set text blank similarly for the other one and for exit we have a command system dot exit so this was the code for your calculate thing and to clear you just need to write this this for all text fields you have so for this we have to write for four times for all the text fields and to exit we just write system dot exit and in brackets zero make sure you write the proper case s should be capital and rest all is small so here we have discussed three questions of the paper that is approx 35 marks that is half of the paper I'll be discussing next half of the paper in the next video. So in case of any doubts, do write in the comment section. I'll get back to you.